You're watching Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Ihr guckt hier Vapor Scene bei Vapor Trails TV. Viel Spaß! Well, good evening everybody. Hello. You know what it is, it's Tuesday. Yeah, it's Tuesday the 18th of March 2014. And you are watching Vapor Scene here on Vaporshells.tv. Hello. <sighs> Plenty of people in chat tonight. And uh, I'm sure they're going to be talking about all sorts of things as I put them up on the screen. Um, but all that is going to be after the titles, which are going to be in about 10 seconds, I think. Yeah, because uh, we're going to look at some of the news stories from the past week, some of them from today. Um, quite contentious, too. Um, but more about that when we kick off the show proper. Uh, and uh, we've got some uh, little bit of mod building by myself. Uh, and we're going to be talking about juice additives with uh, Cat and Sav, which did air last January, strangely enough. Um, but uh, we've brought it back because we've got a lot more new people um, coming on board now. And uh, I thought it'd be good to just refresh people on uh, what you can use and what's available to use out there. So uh, all that will be after these. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e liquid Yes, indeed, it's me, it's Tuesday, it's two and a half minutes past nine on the 18th, and welcome to Vapor Scene on VaporCharles.tv. Um, yes, funny old week, I've been off this week um, from work, so uh, hello Dazza, I know you're watching in chat, <laughs> as you know Dazza and I work together, he's working, I'm not, oh shame, um, but I have been very busy doing things and reorganising things and stuff as I'm not working. Uh, for next week is a busy week. Um, so I thought I'd do as much as I can in my little office come studio this week. Um, so uh, behind the facade, it's chaos. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, let's look at some news stories because um, I found a few. And I've just clicked on something twice instead of clicking on it once. There you go. Clicked on it once. Um, yes, Clive Bates tweeted this. I think it was either yesterday or Sunday. Um, and uh, the quit or die regime causes more smoking and disease. Uh, and this was the uh, the article. It was the BMJ Group blogs. Um, Simon Chapman on e-cigarettes: the best and the worst case scenarios for public health. <sighs> okay, so we'll forget about the first bit. Uh, the best case: massive rapid migration of current smokers into vaping. Yeah, that would be the best case if we get left alone. Uh, the scale of this would be akin to that which occurred when digital cameras replaced film cameras. I've got to come to me. When digital film cameras replaced film cameras. Digital cameras replaced film cameras. Um, it's a strange analogy. It's going back to the whole pen thing. Strange. Anyway. Unparalleled declines in smoking cause diseases, starting with cardiovascular and respiratory diseases and followed years later by declines in smoking caused cancers where the latency periods between exposure and disease onset are longer. It goes on. The second part. There would be hermopathically small levels of vaping uptake among ex-smokers and children who would have never smoked or used any form of nicotine. Now, we're going back again, aren't we? I'm looking at this screen and that screen. We're going back again to the whole gateway thing aren't we why on earth would anyone who's never smoked want to start using an e-cig you can kind of 
look at you know the possibility of of shisha with no nicotine and maybe that might be you know a bit of a thing that somebody wants to do in a club they don't smoke but they fancied some flavored vape fair enough it's not going to do them any harm though is it so most vapors would also stop vaping this would eliminate any precancerous risks of deep nicotine inhalation 200 times a day 200 times blimey that's low level stuff 73,000 times a year um, the review review noted nicotine deregulates essential biological processes like regulation of cell proliferation apoptosis migration invasion long words i can't even say some of them the cell meditated immunity is wide variety of cells including fe uh, fetal embryonic and adult stem cells they go on on the next paragraph there. But thankfully, continued research would indicate the levels of exposure to nicotine from vaping was akin to health risks of coffee drinking. Big thumbs up. Continued research also affirms that secondhand vape is inconsequential to any health outcome, despite particle sizes of vape being comparable to that in e-cigarette smoke. And that article goes on for another couple of pages and it would take us quite a while to read through it so I'm not going to. Um, in all these articles there are some good points and some bad points. It's when they get all muddled together that people just get bamboozled by the information uh, and I don't know what you're saying in chat, I'm just looking across because there's a bit of a gap between what I say and what you type. Um, but uh, it's uh, they need to start getting it right basically, instead of mixing all things together and making it look worse than it is, because it's not, is it? Um, the other tweet I saw was this. Jim K tweeted this uh, about Galaxo J and J, uh, and J and J, lobbying against e-cigarette competitors. Uh, and I found the story following the link, uh, and it was this one. Uh, Glaxo Smith Klein PLC wants an advertising ban and strict European regulation of e-cigarettes. Hmm, I wonder why. Which don't contain tobacco, but which do compete with its nicotine gum and other smoking cessation products. And J&J, &J, if you look in the third paragraph, they market the nicotine line of products in all markets outside the US, is also strongly in favour of regulating all non-tobacco nicotine products, including e-cigarettes as medicines. And if I go to the next bit, which is there, there we go. Claxo sells nicotine in the US, is lobbying Europe to class e-cigarettes as medicines, which claim European sales of $7 billion a year. That is a lot. And in a recent FMC update, John Gads, you did mention farm pesticides, but what, what's wrong with adding, including tobacco pesticides? and others evading paying the industry-wide tobacco settlements that Pennsylvania and other states collected from big cigarette makers. What can I say? There's other stories. I've, I found one earlier on today, and I didn't have time to, to pick it up, um, about a certain company suing 13 different e-cigarette companies for infringement of patents, uh, and the original electronic cigarette patent goes back to 1965. I'll have to see if I can pull that out um, during the break, if I can find it again, um, because I did look that one up. Um, what else have I got? Yes, now, you may have seen on the Twitter feed today um, that there was a story in the Leicester Mercury, uh, and it was this. Now, that's quite a long, big slide there, so you're not going to see much of it, but this is kind of the main bit. Um, in the Leicester Mercury earlier on today, uh, as part of the Psychology Invited Speaker Seminar Series at the University of Leicester, Professor Jason Hughes from the University Department of Sociology will today argue that e-cigarettes, which are currently unregulated throughout the United Kingdom, will soon face legislation that will restrict and ban them, and that concerns about social dangers more than physical dangers to health will be the cause of it. Now, that article has now gone because this is what you get if you follow the link that was in Twitter. Yes, page not found. Because it's been taken down, because it's inaccurate. 
and it doesn't actually say what Professor Jason Hughes was meaning. Uh, and on their website, the University of Leicester, the press office website, um, had this little sound bite. Uh, and this is actually what Professor Jason Hughes was saying in that soundbite. This is a recording from the University of Leicester. I'm Jason Hughes. I'm Professor of Sociology and Head of Department at the University of Leicester. The verdict is out on whether e-cigarettes are harmful, but there are very few clinicians who would argue they're as dangerous as conventional cigarettes. An e-cigarette, it's very different from a normal cigarette. It doesn't contain smoke contains a smoke-like vapour, which is really just a water solution. So the clear, obvious benefit of using an electronic cigarette is it's not harmful in the same way that conventional smoke is. And the electronic cigarette has got to be the most civilised form of smoking we've had to date because it's smoking without smoke. The smoke has been erased from smoking. In a world where there's a widespread ban on smoking in public places, well, it means that you can smoke where you like. You can smoke at work. You can smoke in pubs. You know, you're not invading the air of other people. It's generally not considered to be offensive in the same way that smoking was. It doesn't have the smell, and you're not killing other people. Some conventional smokers have switched to e-cigarettes in their attempts to stop. And recent data suggests that something like one in three quit attempts are undertaken with e-cigarettes. And there is already at least anecdotal evidence to suggest that there's been a number of very, very successful attempts. And what vapors do is they start with a very high dose of nicotine solution and they gradually work their way down to lower and lower doses until they end up with just a glycol liquid solution without any nicotine in it at all. So they're weaning themselves off. We're soon going to see very strong regulation on electronic cigarettes. The European Union approved the Tobacco Products Directive. Now, one of the controversial things about this Tobacco Products Directive is it lumps together e-cigarettes with conventional combustible forms of tobacco. There's a stipulation that the dosage of e-cigarettes should be 20 milligrams per milliliter within the nicotine solution. And a lot of vapors are objecting to that because they start on much higher dosages. The jump from a cigarette to an e-cigarette used to be not that big a leap. But now there's this seemingly arbitrary stipulation that should only be 20 milligrams per milliliter. That's now taken away the possibility of this kind of very easy transition from normal cigarettes to e-cigarettes. This is a recording from the University of Leicester. For more information, visit us online at le.ac.uk. Yes, so that is what Professor Jason Hughes said in that um, little soundbite that was on the University of Leicester Press Office webpage. Uh, now, Dave Dawn is going to be looking at this story in much greater detail on VT Talk on Thursday, and hopefully he will have Professor Hughes on the show as well, uh, if not a pre-record, um, possibly live. So that is all in the mix at the moment for Thursday, but Dave will be looking at this in greater detail. Um, because um, it's a bit of a debacle for the Leicester Mercury, is it not, if you've seen the original piece? Yes, now then, let's go to this. This was tweeted earlier on, actually, um, and this is a recruitment for some study that is going on on NRT, uh, and it's at UCL, Department of Epidemiology, <laughs> Epi <laughs> epidemiology, get it right in a minute, and public health. Uh, and uh, you get 25 quid, but no travel costs. Um, I've got the link, which I will get one of the guys to um, paste up um, for me. Uh, and I'll do that in a second. Um, but yeah, if you're in uh, central London, might be well worth getting in contact because uh, it could get some interesting data. And that's what we need. We need lots more data to prove our case, basically. So, yes, there we go. Let's go to the ads. Uh, when we come back from the ads, uh, we've got some bits of vid for you. Um, and then um, I've got another couple of new stories, um, which aren't vaping related. Uh, I just uh, found them on Twitter and uh, they amused me. So uh, I thought I would share them. So I will see you in two minutes. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e -Vape, UK purveyor, of e-cigarettes and e-liquid.
I've ever and I've ever elected best in Yorkshire for your ASIC needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-Elixir.co.uk. I've ever and I've ever dash elixir.co.uk approach sponsors of VeberTrails.tv. Now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. And welcome indeed back to part two of this week's show. Yes, so the other news story that I found, <laughs> which made me chuckle, uh, is from Australia, uh, and it's this. Uh, and this was Dirty Eddie who uh, tweeted this. Breathtaking bravado foils speed camera, and I've enlarged it on the next one, there you go. Um, so, some of the Department of Transport uh, from Canberra, um, some, some youths, youths, uh, some guys um, stole the number plates off a camera van um, while they were distracting the occupants uh, and put them on their own car uh, and then drove multiple times past it uh, which resulted in 17 tickets being issued to the person who was actually operating the vehicle. And I thought that was just cracking. <laughs> the amount of times you go past them and uh, you know you may or may not Get, uh, get flashed via six points, or your three points, how many points is it these days? I think it might be three points. Um, not that I've got any, thankfully, um, because I'm rather good. I always keep within the speed limit. Yes, can't, have, can't afford to have any points. But uh, I thought that was uh, very amusing. Yeah, it tickled me. <laughs> uh, let me also mention uh, about the um, vape meet on a week on Sunday. Um, the 30th of March that uh, Matt uh, has organised. Um, starts at 2pm, the reggae music from 6 and the food available from 8. Now there is a trailer on YouTube uh, that Matt has put up but I can't play that because it's got copyrighted music on, um, otherwise I would do. Um, but there you go. Uh, and I know that Rusty also has a meet tomorrow at the Wombwell Conservative Club and I don't have a slide up for that I'm afraid. Um, but I might be going to that. I'll have to wait and see. Um, but that is tomorrow night at 7, I believe, at the One Well Conservative Club in Barnsley. Yeah. So, let's move on. Uh, and last January, Cat and Sav very kindly did some videos for me um, on additives. Uh, they did one on ethyl maltol, which is cracking stuff, I have to say, because Cat sent me some, and it's lovely. Uh, and I make up some liquid using exactly the same method that Kat and Sav are going to show you right now. Thanks, Marco. Kat here. And Sav. And Sav. And we thought we'd have a little look 
at, or at least Marco's asked us to have a little look at some of the ways we do things. Because everybody does things differently, don't they? They do. And our speciality, for me, it's these. As you can see, that's some doesn't, size bottle. She doesn't do things by half. <laughs> and in case you can't read what's on the label, because you probably can't, ethyl malto crystals. I use them a fair bit. But I'll tell you about that in a minute. And yours, sir. Yep. My speciality is the methyl. Not always crystals, but crystals is the method that I'm going to look at. Yeah, because you do combinations, don't you? I do. It depends what I've got at the time. Now, we've been at this. Do you realise it'll be four years in March? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Scary, isn't it? It is actually, yeah. Because wow. it doesn't seem like two minutes since we were sitting through there. No. With my little pink. Pink nano ones. <laughs> but that's another story. Yeah. If you're making your own, whatever you're making, you're going to be starting with a base liquid. In my case, this one's 52 milligram. Um, some people buy 72. Mm -hmm. I'll just stick with this. Is that an AVG or PG mix? This one is a PG. Um, because I have I have some funny reactions with VG. The NAS. <laughs> oh, NAS. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit, I mean, I leave it in VG, but I tend to always get my nicotine in PG. Mainly because it's easier to mm -hmm. melt the bottle. <laughs> yeah. I prefer having it in PG for the reasons I gave before. Plus, I do use a little bit of VG mm. in the mix, but I need to be certain I'm, I'm not overdone it. Yeah, that you're predominantly PG. So I stick with VG. But if they haven't got that, um, with PG, if they haven't got that, I'll get a VG piece. You'll then have your propylene glycol, if you use it. You will then have, oh, dicky. Oh. It's smudged. It's smudged, just a tad. A VG. VG. This, this one isn't too bad, it's Acrid. still a bit gloopy. Yes. Some like that word. Oh, gloopy, I love the word gloopy. Love the word gloopy. Oh, there's some more gloopy than others. That one's quite workable. That's right. And you can get your ethyl maltol in little bottles too. More manageable size. <laughs> and then, of course, you've got your flavourings, which we're not really going to bother with. No. Um, start with a good guide. Is that for you? Very lightly. Yeah. The, the poet, what we're doing. <laughs> now, I've just printed this one off the internet. And basically, it's for a 20 mil mix of 20. It's a fire engine. Now what was that for me then? It's a fire engine. You see? They say our videos are not exciting. Listen to that. This one gives you step by step details. There are lots of them out there on the net. You Some get apps for your phone as well. Yes you can. You have to be careful with your flavourings guys. Please be careful. Um, on average, the rule is no more than 20% flavour when you, you, you're doing these mixes. Some are stronger than others. I happen to know that Lisa's at Cloud9 are very concentrated, so you don't need as much mm -hmm. if you're using Lisa's. Excellent flavourings, may I? Yep. DB, around about the 20%. And really into that figure comes your ethyl maltol. And you would probably see the same with yeah. that. So what we're going to do is explain the process of how it can be done. Now, I'm going to be honest here, and I'm sure you are. Of course. <laughs> I don't even measure anymore. Oh. It's been four years. 
I don't need to. Don't I eye and taste music? When you're doing things, where you, if you're new to all this, wear your gloves, get some latex gloves, they're cheap enough off the internet and you can still work with them quite well. If you get it on your hands, don't leave it there all day. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. It ain't going to kill you. Latex gloves. But it can be a bit hot. It can and you can end up nick overdosing if you vape and oh. absorb it through your skin. One or the other, but not both. <laughs> yeah, try not to do both. But yeah, sometimes if I'm working with uh, Nick, I'll, I tend to just wear one latex glove. Don't know why. One's enough. One's all I've got, really, so that's probably why. I have a box for You have, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's the thing that if you're handling stuff all the time, it just saves the, the risk. Yeah. I tend to mix 30ml at a time. Um... So I'm talking about um, a heap teaspoon of ethyl maltol. Is for 30 ml is quite safe. Like you see it going in there, and you can see it's like a sugary solution in there. It smells divine. Mm. That's a dry powder. It smells like candy floss. It's candy floss. All ethyl maltol is going to do is give it a pleasant aroma and a little bit of sweetness. That's all it's going to do. It's that smell of candy floss that you get at the fairground. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That's all it's going to do. Now, when I mix mine, I dissolve those crystals first. And I personally do it in PG. I'm not going to do it here. I'm showing you the method because at the end of the day I've made videos regarding ethyl maltose so I'm not going to repeat them. Once you've got your liquid in there, now I would recommend PG for this, once you've got your PG in there don't use your nicotine, put it, you can either put it in a microwave but you have to be careful, no more than 10 seconds depending on the volume you have. I'll put a little bit in, then I'll be persuaded. I bet you I'll never get this old. Good old fashioned way teeth. Well, I've still got them. The time for measuring can come when you're putting it in the box. Yeah, because you're just making the yeah, mixing solution at this stage. This is another way. Family. You've all heard of a ban marie Oh, maybe you haven't. It took me a long time to hear of it. Just full of hot water. You make sure that stays with boiling water and then you keep mixing because this is going to take a while. Once it's dissolved, that's the point you can bottle it, keep it, use it for mixing as and when you're ready, or just make it fresh each time. But leave it in there. That's the key. And that is all you need to do. Now, I'm not going to go any further with this one because I think I've given you all the information you need. Make up your mix. Um, 30, 60 ml, perfect amount. Then your second bottle is steepened because all this um, steepened lock I don't really do. I tend not to steep because I tend to mix as I go. Mm -hmm. Because I lose things. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I had them. And could I find them? Size of them? See, I've, that's I've had to buy new ones. And then I found these yesterday. I'll tell you. So, any questions? You know where the Vapor Trails TV forum is? Get your questions on there. Yep. Okay? Um, so now, at the Sabs Day 1 next week so i'll be questioning her for you and that no marco put that tea down it's your turn yes that was cat and sav talking about the uh, ethyl maltol crystals uh, and thank you to them for doing that and 
because this was kind of done last January, it's now five years for uh, Cat and Sav. Yeah, five years, not, not just coming up to four. Um, it's good when you keep old stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Now, I used the microwave method um, to do mine using PG. I did try it with VG, but it just didn't dissolve um, as well as it does in PG. Um, so I used the, the PG and uh, the microwave, 10 seconds. I do it in a big jug uh, and I make 200 mils at a time because I'm lazy. So I've just got a bottle of ethyl maltol flavoured PG and I use that when I then do my mixes. Um, and the, uh, the caramel dolce leche hazelnut uh, has got that in it uh, and it makes the room smell really, really nice uh, and gives that lovely sweet taste. Yeah. So uh, yes, that was ethyl maltol. Uh, and next week, Sab's going to show the uh, menthol crystals. And the reason why I've kind of brought these videos back is because a few weeks ago I did notice that um, people were asking questions about menthol and other crystals and things. So I thought we've got a, a lot of new people um, joining us now. So it'd be good to refresh people's memories, number one, uh, and also to uh, show new people what are, what's out there. Uh, and there's also stuff like coolada for the, uh, the old back of the throat um, coolness. Um, which is also good, which I use on occasion. So uh, that was ethomaltol. Next week, menthol. Yeah. Now then, going on from the the, the newbie, um, the new people coming on board, I thought it'd be also good to uh, do a bit of tin your tipping. Yeah. So this is something that I've re-edited, um, especially for the show, uh, and um, it's a bit of vaporcine does tin your tip. Do you remember that from a few weeks ago? Yeah. It's uh, it's this. Vapor scene does tin your tip. Tin your tip. Tin your tip. We've got the battery holder box mod here. I've got a horn button and I've got a LED with the resistor that comes with it. Um, and if you open up battery box what you will see is obviously the battery connections uh, and this one here um, is the negative obviously positive here and then a pre-wired 510 connection and what we do need to do is we need to take away some of this in order to get the button in properly so we're going to use that using my Dremel type tool. So that's what we're going to use. It's quite handy. At variable speed um, with a 8mm shank I think on there. Um, and I'm using a set of tools that I got from an auction site. Uh, they are diamond tipped. Uh, and they're quite good for plastic and metal. So what I'm going to do is just take out a little section here in order to get the button in properly. Although this has been drilled, uh, I think it'd be a little bit better to make that area um, a bit more tidy. go. Now if you don't wear glasses I do advise you to put some sort of eye protection on because the plastic can jump out quite a lot and I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit more off this side so there's a complete area around where the um, switch is going to go. So as you can see now, I've cleaned that area out so where the button goes in, I'll just show you that now, just taking off the, uh, the background, the back of the button.
and now you can get very easily the uh, the button and the nut attached quite nicely. So I'm just going to uh, get rid of these bits of plastic. Right there in the bin. So let's fit this properly. Buttons going on. Spring washer and then the nut. And at this stage, I'm not gluing anything, I'm just going to do everything finger tight. There we go, and that's the button in. What I do want to try and do is keep these contacts pointing in this direction. Right, there we go. That is now on. So, the next thing I need to do is think about where my LED is going to go. There is, at the bottom here, a little hole. And the LED will fit in that hole, but not without um, a little bit of work to make that big enough. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this little section here, and this is where um, the negative would have been. So I'm just going to get rid of that bit. And that is a little bit better now. And then it's a case of making the hole in the bottom there a tad bigger so that the head of this will fit in. And what I want to do is just make this, mm, it's probably a little bit too small that's that tool, um, I'm going to go to a different shape. Yeah, so I've put a different shape on. Uh, going to interview. Got a different shape on. And I'm just going to enlarge. go right now that is the perfect size for this LED to fit into and I'm going to before I do anything else I'm just going to bend up the prongs on here I'm not going to cut them yet I'm just going to bend them up like that so I can just push this in to where it's going to go. This will all be secured with some glue when everything is tested and I know it works. So there we have our LED just in the hole. And what's going to happen is one of these poles is going to one side of the switch and the other one is going to the other side of the switch and then the middle one, this middle prong, is going to go with the resistor to the negative on the battery connection. 
We also need to wire this length to one side. So what I'll probably do is cut this to length, solder here, cut the other positive to length and solder there and then we're going to cut this solder to the negative and then we'll use the excess to connect up our LED. So I'm going to cut all these to length and then we'll get the solder and iron out and get it soldered up. Yes, hello, back to me. Uh, yeah, that was part one of my little DIY, DIY box mod build. Um, and we'll have the second half of that on next week's show. Um, and um, if I can find it, because I've put it somewhere, uh, I'll even bring it out and we'll vape on it as well. Because <laughs> it still still goes rather nicely and it's very stealthy as well. Yeah, so uh, that was my little tin your tip snippet uh, for this week. Uh, and Gary and Mark will be back very soon for Tin Your Tip proper. I just thought I'd uh, keep you all in, keep you all in the zone for Tin Your Tip. Um, and just looking through chat as that was playing through about flavourings and uh, someone mentioned TG's flavourings and TG's flavourings are great. I do like them. Uh, Red Astaire, hmm, it's not really for me that Dazza. Um, I do like high voltage uh, and I've got some high voltage concentrate so if you want I can make some up. Um, live on the show uh, if you want to see some mixing done those of you who don't do it um, and uh, aphrodisiac is also a fantastic tea juice juice yes other juice manufacturers are of course available uh, night nuclear pollution oh that's lovely anyway <laughs> enough about juice tonight um, that is it for me and uh, we're almost out of time so don't forget after in about three minutes time on the other channel we have DE Talk if you speak German. If you don't you can go over to RY4 Radio and carry on the fun over there and of course you can do that every night of the week over at ry4radio.com. Tomorrow night being Wednesday it's Team Talk with the usual crowd and then Thursday it is VT Talk with Dave and Sav and hopefully uh, Professor Jason Hughes. I had to look down on my screen there to make sure I got his name right. <laughs> Sunday, Dave's Tackle Box with Dave Kitson and more than likely a guest in the guise of Mr. David Dawn, uh, which takes us back to Monday and the Haze Hour with Dave, Keith and Kat. I will be here next Tuesday, he says, searching for his credits um, for another Vapor Scene. Until then, my friends, have a good week. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Scene is proudly sponsored by Health Evape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid.